this lecture, we will review how the mind and the brain is actually different. The human brain is an amazing and powerful tool. It allows us to learn, to see, remember, hear, perceive, understand, and create language. Cognitive psychologists study how people acquire, perceive, process, and store information. This work can range from exploring how we learn language to understanding the interplay between cognition and emotion. New technologies like magnetic resonance imaging, the MRI, allow researchers to see a picture of the brain at work, helping them to understand how a brain reacts to a particular stimulus or how differences in brain structure can affect a person's health, personality, or cognitive functioning. The human brain has evolved over millions and millions of years. The most primitive parts of our brain operate at a deeply unconscious level and influence a great deal more of our conscious behavior than most of us realize. Let us now review the mind and consciousness. Most Western neuroscientists assume that consciousness is produced in some way by the brain, although no mechanism has been proposed by which physical processes could produce thoughts, feelings, or sensations. However, there is a large body of empirical evidence suggesting that consciousness sometimes occurs in the absence of any brain activity. Most scientists agree that the mind is a product of the brain. The mind is what the brain does, some people say. There is, however, a huge difference between the mind and the brain. The brain is physical and objective, and the mind is mental and subjective. So the mind must begin where the physical properties of the brain leave off and the mental properties of the mind take over. Sigmund Freud was a research psychologist studying various areas of psychology, including the psychoanalytic theory. He proposed structures on the psychosexual development, psychoanalytic theory, and personality development. Freud believed that there are three components that make up human personality development and how we interact with the world. These structures are known as the id, the ego, and the superego. These three aspects of psychoanalysis can determine personality characteristics, habits, and future behaviors. How such aspects of the mind are revealed are pursued by various means, but personality assessment is the primary tool of applying psychoanalysis. Freud is known as the father of the unconscious due to his psychoanalytic theory that viewed the conscious mind as just the top of a much deeper mind called the unconscious. These conscious and subconscious forces can determine our relationships with others in the future, how our personalities shape who we are, and our decisions we make from day to day. These daily decisions become our habits and will determine our level of success in life. The unconscious mind are the mental processes that happen without our knowledge of it occurring. It is important to understand these concepts of personality theories to help assist with the understanding of our own personality. Our conscious and unconscious mind do play a role in configuring how we think and behave in the manner that we do. This concept is one way of our behavior 
be it negative or positive, is automatically dictated without us being fully aware. Freud's iceberg theory is one that is accepted as a staple of psychological research and application. Freud compared the mind to an iceberg, the conscious mind only being the tip of the iceberg, while below was a much more vast and complex part of the mind called the unconscious. Freud spoke about a dynamic unconscious which is defined as an active system encompassing a lifetime of hidden memories, the person's deepest instincts and desires, and the person's inner struggle to control these forces. In the iceberg theory, Freud refers to our conscious and unconscious state of mind. He adds that about 90 to 95 percent of the mind is influenced on our unconscious experiences alone. This takes up the majority of the iceberg or the mind. The other 5 to 10 percent of our mind is what we are fully aware of. This is known as our conscious mind or just simply consciousness. This is a small portion of the iceberg that is exposed to the surface of the water. It includes everything that we are aware of. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think and talk about. A part of our conscious includes our memory, which is not always a part of the conscious, but that can be retrieved easily at any time and brought to our awareness. Freud's iceberg theory explains the underlying reasons of human behavior. Further exploring an individual's personal background and childhood experiences may help us gain insight on why people behave the way they do. This is a major breakthrough in the psychology field and is commonly referred to as when finding the causality for atypical behavior. The mind is a powerful tool that needs to be fully understood through more research and knowledge about this phenomena. It is truly unfathomable how the mind can act on its own and have the power to control our everyday decisions, impulses, and reasons making important and some less important decisions. The unconscious mind control everything that humans do, but they are unconscious of doing it, such as breathing, blinking, the heart pumping blood, and more. Without the unconscious part of the mind, humans would not survive. Psychologists today also share Freud's interest in the unconscious mind and the impact it has on everyday life. However, psychologists see the unconscious mind as the factory that builds the products of conscious thoughts and behavior.